And here comes Grizzly Discovery's prospectors. Sebo and Cash, will he get stuck? That is the question of the hour. Well, hello everyone, Dan Hurt with Dan Hurt Prospecting here. Welcome back to my channel. And if you're new, welcome. I hope you're in your subscription today. I am here on one of my claims in the Greenwood area that with a couple prospectors from Grizzly Discoveries, we've got Cash and Sibo, plus my dad's come along for the day. We are doing some prospecting of a few old adits at the Gold Drop Mine to see what kind of minerals we can find. Here is gold and silver. Last time I was here, I saw some native silver in the ore. Hopefully we can find some more of that this time. So wish me luck and I hope you enjoy. Now you may have seen me doing a lot of videos lately with these guys from Grizzly Discoveries. And that is because I own a fair bit of land in the Greenwood Rock Creek area that borders on Grizzly's land. And I have decided that I'm gonna slowly sell all of my land to Grizzly Discoveries for them to use in their portfolio for larger scale mining operations. And as I go through each and every claim, I'm bringing up these guys to do the prospecting up here to make sure it's what Grizzly wants. And then if we find what we're expecting to find, Grizzly likes it, we will then do an option agreement to bring it into Grizzly's portfolio. Today, it's the gold drop mine. Now this right here, this little hill you see in front of us, you can see it's not natural. This is a mine dump. Right above it is three different adits where they dug the material out of the adit and they dumped it right here. And in the mine dump, we see lots of the quartz seam that they were following. They left a lot of the ore behind because this mine was never in production. This mine here was just a prospect. They were looking to see what the quartz seam held obviously doing assays and running small amounts, but in a prospect like this, you often find lots of the ore left behind because they were just going after the best looking stuff. Today, we're gonna to collect up a lot of the ore that they left behind to take back and crush and see if we can actually find some free milled silver. Because last time I was here, I'm pretty sure I saw free milled silver in one of the rocks I broke. Bring one rock to the guys and all they want to do is study it, I tell ya. What you see, Sibo? Oh, there's some sulfides in there in this quartz. Just kind of looking. No big gold nugget? No big gold nugget yet. Uh, where's your loop, huh? So Cash, the first add is just at the top of this mine dump right here. There's a second one over this way that is definitely collapsed in, but you see the trench that leads into the adit. And there's a third adit above this first one. And then there's a fairly nice shaft at the top of the mountain going straight down. Perfect. Let's go explore. Let's go find some silver. It is the gold drop, but it's a silver mine. Go figure. Made it to the top of the first tough climb. Adit's right over there. Look at these quartz veins, juicy. You see the quartz is about that thick on it. Bands of rotted out, or oxidized sulfides. There's the band of quartz right there. Let's see if I can pop that one open and see what it looks like. Nice fresh break, full of sulfides. Oh yeah, there's some some pyrite there, right along the edge of this quartz seam. Definitely mineralized. Nice looking. Nice looking. Well, let's hope we see something that we can identify in the field as silver. Obviously when we go and crush this, we'll know for sure, but out here in the field would be nice to see something we can say, that's gotta be silver. Sibo, what do you see on the corner here? That looks like maybe a sulfide, but hey, can we get lucky? Right in here? Yeah, right on, the, right on the edge, right on the ridge. My eyes are oh, so bad these days. I need these young bucks to do my identifying for me when it comes to small stuff. Definitely <laughs> disseminated sulfides along the edge here. Pyrite, another silvery looking 
sulfide as well. Not much alteration. It's good looking rock. Bag it. Bag it. So, Sibo, uh, uh, Cash. The other Sibo, little Sibo, Cash. <laughs> It's in the video. It's official now. Where in front of me? <laughs> is over here checking out the smelly Addit. I don't want to be referred to as little Sibo. <laughs> Addits always smell bad because of that right there. Every Addit you find has a pack rat nest at the entrance. Yeah. It's nasty. Yeah. But it's flooded. We want to see how deep it is in there. So I'm going to send Cash down and in. Yeah. With my underwater flashlight, which we can actually submerge into the water and it's going to light underneath and we can see what the ground looks like. What do you think of that plan? Sounds great, Dan. Let's do it. <laughs> Sounds like gale time. It's on its brightest setting right now. So if you put it underwater, it's waterproof. It's going to light up the water from underneath. And we'll see. And you'll see how clear the water is, clean the water is, and also how deep it is. I brought my hip waders in case it does look accessible to walk down and inside. Oh yeah, okay, it's not that deep. How big's the pack rat? It's huge! Oh. It actually is a pretty big nest. <laughs> it actually is not that bad, Dan. You can see through? Oh yeah, you'd be able to walk there. Put the flashlight under water, let's see when it lights up. Well, it's just... Oh, getting there? There, there you go. go. There you go, that's neat. I need to get in a bit more to get the shot. Well, it looks pretty stable on the bottom too. Like, that yeah. looks like a nice solid bottom to it. It does. It goes pretty far, doesn't it? I, get, I never was able to find underground maps of this, so I don't know how big this adit actually is. There's a fairly large dump out front, so they moved a lot of material. There is a bunch of, um, I wonder if that's just moss there. The green? Yeah, hard to tell. It almost does just like moss. Oh, do yeah. you see any evidence of the actual vein? I do not. Okay, well, that looks safe enough for me to throw waders on and go for a little bit of a walk. I would agree. Dean. Couldn't see the vein at all? No. Well, let's hope farther inside we get to see it. There you go. Okay, Dan, get in there. I gotta get my hip waders first. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Of course, my hip waders are down at the ATV. I didn't oh. bring them up unless, you know, I was going to for sure be going in. What's that big box that you brought up? Oh, cameras. Ooh, you got purdies? Yeah. Sibo sounds a little bit excited about something. What do you see? Well, you've got some disseminated sulfides in there, but there's this little area here that very well could be silver in place here, right? Along this black seam. It, it doesn't look like any sulfide that I usually see, and it yeah. runs in these little black lines right yeah, along here. It's the wrong... I wonder if I have my close-up camera with me. I think I do. You could see it in there. The sun just hit this piece of metallics that's in here, and I am not 100% sure, but I'm a lot more sure now in the sun that that's a piece of native silver. Nice. Yes, Sibo, the, the piece I saw last time we were up here looked just like that. And it kind of smeared on the surface, not crystalline like you'd think of a sulfide. So that's why I think it's metallic silver. Definitely throw that piece in. See, uh, Sibo again. I'm trying to call you Sibo again. Cash. Cash just called us over to witness a huge underground hornet's nest. Is that little Sibo? Oh, oh and, and he just pissed them off. It's time to leave. <laughs> what are you guys doing? <laughs> Way to go, Cash. Do you like how I ragged the other side of Sibo? Yeah, totally. <laughs> I'll protect you, Dan. Sibo, you should go into cross country racing. I'm Cash! <laughs> <laughs> the biggest insult we could say to Cash is call him uh, Sibo. Little Sibo. Little Sibo. <laughs> or call me Big Cash. Anyway, oh my you god. You should go into cross country racing. I've never seen anybody make it through trees so fast. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Oh man, you should have seen last year. I'm not sure if I got the camera on that, but uh, Cash put his pick right near the entrance of the, yeah. of the hornet's nest, yeah. and instantly two dozen hornets flew out mad. <laughs> I don't think anyone got stung. No, but they're not happy. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we have way too much fun up here. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I'm going down to my quad to go get my hip waders. Ports.
Oh, a blue metallic in it. That's probably a piece of Galena right there. Dad's got the loop. Let's let him have a look. Oh, right camera. there. <laughs> oh yeah, that's Galena. Just a big seam of Galena yeah. all through there. I'll get the close up on that. Big seam of Galena. Well, okay, Galena often goes in masses where you can get like two and three feet thick, so it's not big, but bigger than anything we've seen yet at this site for a sulfide. And if you're unfamiliar with Galena, Galena is a lead sulfide that carries high quantities of silver in with the lead sulfide. Some Galena doesn't have much silver in it, some is loaded in silver, but it's all loaded in lead because, well, it is a lead sulfide. Galena all the way through. Probably native silver in there too. I see something that's a little bit of a line. Probably native silver. And the other side, every bit is good. This is still the big rock. So yep. it's got the Galena, 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 all the way over. That piece of gold in there? Probably just Galena shining back yellow to me. It is the gold drop. I don't think they would have named it the gold drop unless they had some indications of gold here. So it is possible that we won't find just silver, that some gold will come up too. Native gold? Ooh, that would be nice. When I say native metals, that means that it's gold or silver in its metallic form and not locked up in sulfides. Native gold, or free mill gold, is gold that you can see once you've crushed the rock down. Same with silver. Copper, you can get some native copper, that's copper nuggets, not copper in its sulfide form or oxide form. If it's actual metallic copper, it's known as native copper. That is a great sample. I think we want this one to go off for an assay. Rather than me crushing it down looking for native silver, I think this one needs to go off for a proper assay. Grizzly Discoveries will be sending these bags off to the lab to get assayed to see what the actual numbers are in these ore samples compared to us, which will be just taking these big bags down and crushing to see if we can get some exciting looking results. It's been about half an hour and the wasps have calmed down some, but there's the wasp nest in the ground. Ah, f you did that! <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, it totally worked! Sibo! <laughs> oh, There's one right at me. <laughs> With friends like Sibo, who needs enemies? <laughs> <laughs> it was a little rock. Okay, got the hip waders on. Time to go and investigate the pack rat. See what I can see inside. We're not going to go too far in. If it goes a long way, I will turn around quite early. I just recently bought myself a air monitor, but I haven't got it yet. So I will only go in a few feet, basically, take the flashlight and see what I can see inside. I won't walk too far in, and I got my buddies out here just in case. Hello, rat. He's a fresh active rat. There's new green leaves on there. Very cool looking. Ooh, very ratty looking. And here comes the safety officer. <laughs> Ooh, get some nails hanging around. Here. Yeah, there's a lot of nails. Watch where you stand. And here we go. If I find any good samples in here, I'll come back for a bag and hammer. Okay. Oh yeah, baby. I can see through the water to the ground. So it's nice solid ground. Oh, she's a biggin. She's a biggin. Still see the ground, watching for any shafts going down, obviously, but the ground looks good. Very cool. I'm gonna pull out the other flashlight. This one is a strong beam that goes straight back. The other one will light up more of the walls and everything around me. Okay, here we go. Let's see what we find. We're going very carefully, watching the floor very carefully. It's a very stable rock. I'm only like two feet in right now. Be very, very careful. I can see the back. The back is right there, although it looks like it might turn around a corner some. And yeah, that's what, 40 feet back, 50 feet back. There is the vein right on the surface, right on the top. So it's prob they're probably following the vein. It's probably a vertical vein. And you can see it on the top. I can take samples of that while I'm in here. I don't like chipping away inside, but this is very, very stable rock. Very cool. I love that echo you get in one of these caves. Just booms. Yeah, this adit seems to go back maybe 50, 60 feet and then either turn or end. But I'm not comfortable going back that far without an air monitor. I'm still near the end of the entrance and I can feel the fresh air from outside. So I'm not going to go back any farther than that. But I can go a few more feet. 
watching for rats, of course, and watching the floor very carefully, especially since it's underwater and I can't quite see what I'm standing on. The light is penetrating enough that I can see that there's nothing dangerous down below me. Walking through flooded uh, caverns, uh, flooded attics like this, you could go straight over top of a stoke without knowing it. Oh, okay, well, there we go. See those boards underwater? Hopefully the camera's getting that. Those are covering a shaft going straight down and that would be very dangerous. Those boards, you could walk over them to get to the other side, maybe, or they might be rotted out or they might not be supported or they might be who knows what. But yes, when they were digging in here, they obviously found a nice spot of the vein and went straight down at it and it's flooded. If I didn't have these flashlights that could penetrate the water, it's possible I could have walked right over that and not seen it and been down. Now luckily it's water, bodies float, so I would have fallen far enough to, I would have fallen down the whole shaft, but that is dangerous. This is actually a very dangerous adit. That's why if you don't know what you're doing, just stay out of these things. Look at that. You could try the other flashlight and see if the other flashlight penetrates better for the camera. I won't even walk any closer than I am to that right now because who knows how, well, it's stable in here, but I don't want to risk anything. Wow. Don't enter at its people. And I say that, I know I'm inside and I'm doing things very carefully, but these can be very dangerous. Right, Dad? Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> Safety officer. Safety uh, officer. And he's hanging out with Pack Rat. Yeah. Aromatic. Yeah, Pack Rat desks always stink. I don't see any beady eyes looking back at me, but often you see them staring at you. <laughs> yeah, I haven't heard anything shuffle around. Very cool. Okay, I would say it's back to looking for ore samples on the surface. If Cash wants a piece of the seam, uh, the vein inside, I saw a couple chunks right above me here that looked nice, but we'll see if he wants it or not. I'd rather the stuff from the dump. Hello, Rick. <laughs> well, there we are back on the surface. That was fun in there, but I don't like being underground for very long. I'm never all that comfortable underground and I wouldn't have gone and explored that any farther, especially because of that shaft going down. Had a breath again. Now you may have heard me use some terms in there that you aren't too familiar with, like add it or stope. Well, that brings me to a great opportunity for today's geology lesson of the day. Mine terminology. Well, this is an adit. An adit is a horizontal hole going into the ground that enters into a mine. Horizontal. If it's vertical going down, it's called a shaft. Adit, shaft. Once you're inside the mine, there's other terminologies. A raise goes up from an adit or a tunnel. A stope goes down. A drift goes sideways. There's other things like winds and there's all sorts of terminology of things that happen inside a mine at it, tunnel. I believe a tunnel is something that goes from one spot to another inside a mine, where an at it is like a tunnel that comes to the surface, the outside. All sorts of terminologies, those are some of the basics, but there's a lot more than just that. There's today's geology lesson of the day, at it. So dad, how many bags have you got full? One for you to carry. <laughs> That's off the ceiling in there. Well, it was on top of the... Was there any quartz seam in no, that? No, it was two rocks that were sitting on top of the rat nest. Okay. So okay. it would have... Something that would have sloughed off the ceiling in the attic. But not what we're looking for. But there for. was nothing in it. No, I just... Okay. There were two rocks I could pick up, so I just did. We don't need the attic material for the bag, but if Sibo wants some, there's easy stuff to grab that's in there. I often use the uh, term quartz veins a little too loosely. Uh, this is actually a carbonate vein or a quartz carbonate vein. Uh, there is a lot of calcium carbonate in there plus, you know, other things. And we know that because when SIBO puts a bit of acid on it, 
it fizzes. You see a pss of the uh, acid fizzing, and that tells me it's not quartz, but a carbonate, because carbonates dissolve under acid. What kind of acid is it? Uh, hydrochloric acid. Hydrochloric 10%. acid. 10%. 10% hydrochloric down. acid is enough to fizz a carbonate or ruin your clothes. Oh, look, at the bottom, look at the bottom of my the pocket <laughs> yep. where I hold it comes out and we have it in a plastic bag and it still gets through and ruins everything. Oh. Much different type of acid than you're used to, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> no comments. <laughs> Safety squint. Oh, wait, wait. Oh, look at it. Oh, that is crazy, Galena. Nice. Oh, yeah. it, might get, it might get hit by a rock. <laughs> like that thing hasn't been hit by many rocks. Okay, Sebo, what'd you find? <laughs> a little bit of Galena in there. <laughs> Look at that, eh? <laughs> the ground sparkles over here. Look at that. We need to find that part of the vein. Yep, that's a good part. <laughs> Just love finding this stuff at a mine. That's the money stone. I get excited, I know. I get really excited <laughs> about this stuff. So that was the big rock I threw from just down, right right down there on the, the slope. I'm gonna go down there and look for more big rocks because that was exciting. Got two rocks for you, Dad. Ugh. Carrying them uphill when you could go down? Ah, bash these up and see if there's any galena inside. Okay. And then that's just for the bag. You can see they're starting to get a little agitated because I'm here, but they're not stinging yet. But that's the nest we found and Dan's being nice and not throwing a rock at me because I did it to him earlier. Look at that. Oof. Yep, first one's yep. Second one's yep. Those are two good rocks. Well, we got a couple bags full. Time to take them down the hill. Oh, those are heavy. <sighs> the mule. Now my turn. Woohoo! Ah! Woohoo! Ah! I can do it! A mixture of excitement and terror. Well, that's a good load of rock. If there's native silver in that ore, that will be enough to show it to us. Absolutely. What are you two doing over here? Admiring a very old 410. It's my favorite little stagecoach gun. <laughs> as long as you're not calling me a claim jumper right now, I'm, I'm okay yeah. with this. <laughs> <laughs> well, we got our entire sample from the first added. I didn't even walk over to the second added. Sebo and Cash did, they got some samples from over there. And we never got up to the shaft on top. All sorts of things that we could have done, but we found so much great material just from the first added. We got a load. In case you want to see the shaft from above, I'll see if I have old footage that I can put in here. I think I do, but it's a really, really neat place. Great place to play around. Hopefully native silver, hopefully gold, and a great little spot. Hey Sebo, is this what a prospector's truck looks like? Sure does. <laughs> you got all your extra markers, your eyewash station, your mask. Zip tags, butter tags, flagging tape, marking tape, everything you need, extra loop, butter tags, extra book. You know, you, know, you don't want to be short of anything when you're out in the field. Definitely don't want to run out of sample bags when you're out here. No. And this is why you wear hard hats in addits. Ow! <laughs> it looks a lot worse than it is. It's just a little bump, but uh, oops. So no matter what one of these sites looks like to a prospector here looking or whatever you might be doing, the actual value of this or the how good the site actually is doesn't come into it until those assays come back. Because those assays will actually tell you what's in that ore. No matter how good the ore looks, it could still be barren. It could be very rich. You don't know until the lab assays come back and tell you for sure. Hey, Cash made it back. I did. Were you up snuggling with the bears at the top at it? Sasquatch. 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 <laughs> Male or female? Uh, I hope female. Well, well, uh, <laughs> I've heard some stories there, Kyle. This uh, just turned mind. into a nature channel, didn't it? <laughs> well, that was a lot of fun, 
but I know you guys want to see the results from today. Now, unfortunately, with hard rock mining like that, that's not instant. It's going to be a month before I can get that down, crushed, and run over the table at uh, Jason from Mount Baker Mining's facility. And, Sibo, how long does it take for assays to come in? They're a ways oh, off, it, aren't they? It depends. It could be a few months. It could be a few months before we actually get proper assay results. Yeah. So, it's not an instant gratification hard rock mining like placer mining is. You'll have to check back my channel in a few months to see how we did here at the gold drop. Hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, please leave me that thumbs up. If I haven't earned your subscription yet, I hope I earned your subscription today. And a big thanks to everyone for watching, especially my patrons. Because of the support of my patrons, I get to make weekly episodes of Dan Hurd Prospecting. And thanks to Grizzly Discoveries for partnering up with me on all these claims. This has been awesome. Bye. And Dad. <laughs> Until the next one, everyone. Bye. Bye. Bye.